So let's go. Let's get back into solving the ABC murders with Agatha Christie. I'm just kidding. I don't think Agatha Christie's in this. She's the one who wrote this. I'm pretty confident. It's her story. She's essentially the uh, Tom Clancy in this situation. Ego points. I wonder what they do. I wonder if they change anything. Oh, this is this is kind of sad right here. This poor woman is very ill. Yeah, this is. I don't know. If this is a good way to start the day here. Days that days that how can you see your eyes? Clenched. Does not look clenched. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Yeah. She. She does not appear to be doing good at all. Mister Poirot. Oh my God. My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Hmm. The Clark Residence, Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Mm. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. Okay. Here is the skeleton key. Aha. Uh -huh. April 1925, a Chape province, Sumatra. I wonder why they have to hide the key to the medicine, though. Like, isn't that strange? I mean, there's no children. So it's not like they have to be like, okay, well, can't have kids getting into the medicine. I don't know. It's kind of strange. Just strange. Ooh, man. It's closed. Yes. Ah, oh, Mr. Poirot. Oh, I feel better now. Thank you for your help. You asked for me, chère madame. Yes. Yes, of course, I wish to speak with you. But what was it about? Oh, no. no doubt. You wish to talk to me about what happened to this your poor husband? lady. Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? No. Not yet, chère madame. There was a great many people in Chester on the Ooh. day of the murder. Indeed. 
People go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombe's side. So, there were no strangers around the house that day? Who said that? The people who live here. Your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go. Immediately. You are entitled to do so, naturally. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's right. That's right. This subject will probably be useful to me. This subject will probably be useful to me. Yes, yes, it will. I have no idea how. This couple appears to be having fun. Um. This subject would probably be useful to me. Gold comb. They're very strange looking combs. This couple appears to be having fun. Nice. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. Hmm. What is this? Oh, we're thinking now. Oh. Firstly, I have to take it apart. Are you what? This is where the combs go. The mechanism appears to be broken. This part appears to be broken. Okay. Firstly, I have to take it apart. Oh. Okay. that Hastings will not be cross with me. Nice.
Oh god, is this a... Okay. Oh, what are we talking about? Ah, yes. Uh, Thora Grey. Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her. But for me, she was nothing but a hypocrite. Mm. Miss Grey was a hard worker, though. Thank goodness. Fortunately, she was good at her job. I don't see why you all think you should have to defend that girl. You are very harsh. Do not forget that the girl is an orphan. Yes, and she used the fact to get around men. Take Franklin. He's fallen for her sweet-talking charms. Oh, he's a lovely boy, very plucky and sure of himself. But so naive, oh, when it comes to women. Miss Gray did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Gray? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime <sighs> nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at eleven o'clock I saw her talking to someone. Oh, no. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not. Not a gentleman. It would be best to leave. The morphine hidden. The telephone in the hall is Another locked. phone call. Where's everybody else? Hello? Poirot, is that you? Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key. Have you seen Thora Gray again? Briefly. But rest assured, I intend to summon her to London mm. soon. She's a fascinating girl. But secretive. I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. How am I going to open this trunk? Let us examine it. Hmm. Nineteen. Leaving the code on the trunk. Genius. What a strange character Franklin is.
No, no. So, what is this sound? I should be able to open the trap now. There we are. Hey. Okay. Oh God. Okay. Why has Franklin put an Allen key inside his trunk? I'll borrow it for a minute. An Allen key, it can be used in five positions. Okay. Who designed this? Like, this is a crazy box. An Allen key, it can be used in five positions. Well, at least that was easy. Another school. This engraving is not very easy to understand. I need to sort it out. all the way around yeah oh oh my gosh okay come on
Franklin must go. really love his country to have an engraving in his trunk. I think I heard the panel above really. Okay. A signet ring? A signet ring with a code written on it. 1587. It may be useful to me. Really? This giant box just had a ring in it? Okay. Well, better be useful. Oh, Miss Thoragray, Comside, Justin. I believe there's arsenic right here. Arsenic trioxide thallium. It's a little weird. Black Dragon's Curse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To Franklin, who will never grow up. January 25, 1928. Car Charlotte. Hmm. Getting all the clues. So oh, here we go again. A Chinese symbol is engraved on this metal disc. Like this, this character appears to be the right way round. Good. Position of this character looks right to me. Like this, this character appears to be the right way round. That's right. Position of this character looks right to me. Very good. All the circles are facing the right way. What are they showing me? Well, well. The characters engraved on this padlock resemble those engraved on the metal discs. Uh-huh. Genius level intellect. At last, the cupboard is open. Hmm. Genteel and wild. English countryside revisited. The Railway Children, E. Nesbitt. For Franklin, on Tefis Christmas, 1910. Traveling in China, a practical guide for English travelers. Okay. A mat, flask, and rifles. Franklin is very well equipped. I guess so.
Franklin appears to be very active. Rifles. Impressive collection. Oh, tennis racket. Not only did he like killing Franklin animals. Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman. A good he liked to play some ball. A hunter, a traveler. February 1922, South Africa. Okay. July 1920, Alaska Peninsula. You killed a bear in Alaska? You monster. Hmm. What's this? I think the signet ring should be placed here. The plates around the picture appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophies. Okay. The African Kudu. Okay. Thank. The Alaskan Kodiak Bear. Right, right. The Lion of Sumatra. I heard the sound of a mechanism. Strange way of protecting one's safe. Triangulating one's hunting sites on a map. Ah. Uh, was it here? Fifteen? Nice. These documents are very likely going to help me for the rest of the inquiry. The money. A dozen gold sovereigns. 
some shares for the Southern Railway and some treasury bills. This is not worth much, hardly enough to justify your robbery. Charlotte Clark comes so no I big heist Devon here. To Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury World, Chim Chatsui, Colon, Hong Kong, Comside, 1935, January 1st. I wish you with all my heart a happy year 1935. Writing my greeting cards, I have affectionate thoughts for you. Always smiling as a child, sailing to distant countries and bringing back to us trunks full of wonder. At home, everything annoys me. Starting with this young Thora Sir Carmichael is so fond of. I have nobody to share my feelings with, so I write to you. How can I tell you what, what happens you to me? The simplest way the better. I am doomed. I still have one year to live, no more. How do I know? He doesn't have much to say this the morning. Of it's okay. Michael and read a letter not addressed to me. No, neither. In this letter, Dr. Logan to be tells fair. my husband in the most direct way the truth he conceals from me. Sir, I know. But my husband doesn't know I know. Please don't tell him. And if he shares the truth with you, act as you are surprised. Carr will probably speak in his usual convoluted way, but I wanted to be the first to announce it to you. It does matter to me that you are aware of what happens in Comside. Warm regards, Charlotte. Hey, they're writing essays to each other. Sir Carmichael Clark, Comside, Churston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury Road, Tsim Chasui, Kowloon, Hong Kong. Comside, 1935, January the 12th. Dear Franklin, First, I wish you a good start to a successful new year. I have received your letter dated December 10th. Thanks for defending my interest against Wang, this robber. Things could have got pretty bad if you weren't a real good-blooded guy. I envy you for that. Things go on here much as usual. Charlotte is moderately free from pain. I wish one could say more. You may remember Thora Gray. She is a dear girl and a greater comfort to me that I can tell you. I should not have known what to do through this bad time but for her. She has an exquisite taste and shares my passion for Chinese art. No daughter could be a closer or more sympathetic companion. Life has been difficult, but I am glad to feel that here she has a home and true affection. You wrote me you want to stay in China for one more year or even longer. I don't object. The longer you stay, the more opportunities you will have to increase our collection. Nonetheless, you should know that we miss you here, and that Charlotte will be gone by the time you come back. I am, dear Franklin, your truly affectionate brother. At an college school year, 1912-1913, Franklin Clark. School report for Franklin Clark. According to his teachers, Franklin was a good student, but lacked discipline. Hmm. Okay. Well, that one was short and sweet, I guess. Traditional Chinese map. Facsimile. South is on the top of the map. Hmm. Compass, point to the thals. Bronze and Magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong, 1935. 
already seen similar daggers. Oh, and there's one missing from the case. A dark dragon for a bright haired maid. See. Interesting. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have left on the living room table some of my things I don't want to keep. The locket and the dagger. I am sure you know why. For I see some papers that were not there the first time I visited. The daggers. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Valuers report property. Building land located in Comside, Churston Client, Sir Carmichael Clark, April 15, 1935, Court and Brunskill Office. Court and Brunskill. The name is familiar. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? Hmm. Interesting. Ernest Luggan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comsite, Churston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. Hmm. The door is locked. Oh. This unit contains the medical records for Sir Carmichael Clark's patients. Let us study them closely and see if there are any familiar names. No dust on the records from A to D. They've been handled recently. No known names. Disappointing. Lots of dust. The records from E to Z have not been touched for years. No known names. Disappointing. Darn. Mm hmm. Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from?
Something makes me feel uncomfortable. Uh oh. Ta -ta. The gardener does not follow the alignment. That monster. There. That's better. It is symmetrical. Brown pellets. <laughs> Revolting. There. That's better. It is symmetrical. A nice little garden. You know, nice little hint of gloom, I suppose. It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. Hmm. This object would probably be useful to me. Let us now try and get our brain oh cells boy. to work. Here we go. Why did Thora leave personal belongings behind? Um, not the letter, not the gifts. Thora does not want to be. Accused of theft. Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her, but she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusted her. Let us now try and get her. Does make a little bit of sense? Is Thora? Poison rat. Never considered poisoning Lady Clark. Hmm. Thor Grey had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the pass not far from the property. I've finished here. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. Of peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. That's rough. That's rough. Oh my god, he's so slow moving. April 
perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. Hello, Hastings. I have finished in Shurston. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burned document? Yes. You just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. À ce soir. Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. Oh, boy. This man is tired. Crumpled clothes. Unshaven. Dark circles. Hmm. Donald is short of sleep, and it looks as if he didn't even bother to undress before going to bed. Weird. Mr. Paro, I don't know why I'm here. You wanted to talk, and you came to find the only man capable of hearing you. Mr. Paro, since Betty's death, I've doubts about myself. I don't know what to do. And I keep having a horrible dream three nights in a row. Have a drink, and tell me about this trip. It's always the same. I'm on the beach with Betty. I grab her around the throat, and I squeeze, and squeeze until she's dead. Her head falls back, and I see that it's no longer Betty. It's Megan's face. Have you seen Megan Barnard recently? Yes, our grief has brought us together. I never really knew her before. She's really quite a remarkable girl. Mm hmm But I would never tell That's her interesting. about my dream. Why not? Is it her you are attacking in your dream? No, it's Betty. And once Betty is dead, it's Megan's face that appears in its place. Very interesting. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Hmm. Donald does not kill Megan in his dream. He likes Megan, maybe? Sorry, have feelings for Megan, and he feels guilty about abandoning. Betty. Oh, that makes sense. Mr. Fraser, I think that the real meaning of this dream is that you are in love with Megan Barnard. Please go on. <laughs> Do. This dream certainly betrays your guilt. Oh. But what do you feel guilty about? Having killed your fiancé? Possible. Or forgetting her very quickly for her sister? Certainly. And this forgetting is perceived as a second death. So you don't really think I was the one who killed Betty? I do not exclude this theory. I am simply saying that I do not need to know that fact to explain your dream and your guilt. Thank you for being frank, Mr. Poirot. You've helped me a great deal. 
I'm going back to Bexhill. I'll not take any more of your time up. It is late, Mr. Fraser, and you are tired. I'll sleep on the train. I like <laughs> trains. It's easy to sleep rock by the sound of the wheels. Poor boy, he seems completely lost. Well, women seem to like him. I think Megan will take care of him. Oh, I remember. Did you order the product I needed? Yes, we'll be receiving it tomorrow. Bien, it is late. And ask Miss Gray to come tomorrow morning. I have a few questions I wish to ask her. Okay, okay. I think we're progressing, I think. Mademoiselle, I asked you here in order to answer a very important question. Am I right in thinking you said that you did not speak to anyone on the day Sir Carmichael was murdered? It's the absolute truth. Yet, Lady Clark maintained that she saw you talking to a stranger on the front doorstep. Mm. Really? She must have been mistaken. Oh, I remember now. I'd forgotten all about it, but it wasn't important. It was just a salesman. One of those traders who sell stockings from door to door. Can you describe him to me? Medium size. Mm, glasses. Dark suit and a felt hat. Not the sort of man you notice. Completely harmless. That's why I forgot all about him. Nothing else? He was very hesitant and shy. Usually door-to-door -door salesmen are very confident. But he wasn't. You did not leave Cheston willingly, I believe. I don't wish to lie. Lady Clark did not appreciate my presence. And Franklin? Cannot go against the wishes of a sick lady. He is a good man. And he worries a great deal about his sister-in-law. I noticed that you left some personal belongings behind at Cheston. It was too risky for you to keep these objects, am I correct? Risky? What was the risk? You know very well what Lady Clark might have said if you had kept these objects. Indeed. These objects were gifts. But Lady Clark would have been convinced that I'd stolen them. By returning them, I put an end to such evil gossip. Bien. I must ask you one last question. Please reply frankly with either yes or no. If Lady Clark had died, would you have agreed to marry Sir Carmichael if he'd ask you? How dare you ask such a question? Sir Carmichael treated me just like his daughter. And all that I ever felt him was affection and gratitude, nothing else. Hmm. Thank you, mademoiselle. I will not keep you any longer. Interesting. I met Thora Gray on the stairs, her cheeks were ablaze, and she appeared to be deeply hurt. Poirot, have you offended the <laughs> poor girl again? Do you have good reasons for accusing her? I accused her of nothing, Hastings. I simply asked her an important question she did not answer. Let us see if we can answer it for her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Would Thora have married Sir Carmichael? Roach. Hmm. It's possible. It's a possibility. You must know how to read between the lines, Hastings. When Sir Carmichael refers to paternal affection, he's lying to himself. Read this engraving on the brooch. A dark dragon for an angel with glossy hair. These are the words of a lover, not a father. Lady Clark was not wrong. What if Sir Carmichael had fallen in love with his secretary? That doesn't mean that she forced him to do so. True, there are extenuating circumstances. She is a penniless orphan. 
but she's calculating. Just look how she avoided it when asked if she would have married Clark. I see. You think she seduced Sir Carmichael for her own gain, and that now she is doing the same with his brother. Praro, your world is a very dark place. Do not get carried away, mon ami. We have another more important matter to settle. Really? Yes. Would you believe that Miss Grey taught me something new? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Is there another common point between the murders? Wear a gift, box of stockings. Stocking box and an account book. They could buy stockings. Hmm. It's perfectly clear, Hastings. Perfectly clear. Indeed, a stocking seller visited Andover, Bexhill, and Churston on the day of each murder. We have our suspect. This should be of interest to Job. Interesting. Interesting. Chief Inspector, we are looking for a stocking salesman. I see you have a suspect? Yes. Contact all the stocking call sellers who may employ him. Your suspect is a salesman? No, he does not take orders. He sells door to door. Right. The hunt is on. Are you leaving, Mr. Cust? Yes, I'm going to Cheltenham. You shouldn't travel today. You don't look very well. I have to. I... I have engagements. I must respect them. That's true. Can you get the post, Hastings? And why don't you go and get it yourself? Oh, wow. Okay. Très bien. What's going on? I've never known Hastings to be so disagreeable. Okay. And that's where I'm going to end for right now.